oh, I probably wouldn't if I could avoid it. Um, there was a very interesting interview recently with Philip Roth in the New York Times when he talked about his relief when he stopped writing a few years ago and how enjoyable his life had become. Um, I don't know if I'd ever say that I enjoy writing fiction. I think most writers I know do it because you feel an internal pressure. It's very hard to describe it as anything else. You feel the push of, we were talking this afternoon about voices, you feel a push of a, a voice of something that needs to be said. It doesn't even feel like you need to say it. Um, and so that's what you have to spend your time doing. It's, but it's, it's hard, and it's hard to know you're getting it right. It's frustrating, but you can't not do it. Oh, I guess. Um, I was about four, I suppose. You know, I mean, very, very young. Um, I can't remember a time when I wasn't making stories, you know, thinking about what was not already in the world. I think that's what making stories is. Writers perhaps are a bit dissatisfied. Just what we all seem to have around us isn't enough. We have to make something else. I don't know, um, because I can't really remember what I was like when I started out. Um, at the moment, I'm actually writing nonfiction, and it's quite interesting to, and a quite a big work of nonfiction. I, I write journalism too, this is very different. Um, one of the things that's interesting is when I feel dissatisfied because at, at a particular juncture, it doesn't always happen. I would like to be able to move into fiction. I would like to be able to say things that I don't know, but I can't. I have to resist that impulse because that's not my job right now. What are you writing about? I am writing a biography of a man called Washington Roebling who built the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. I think routine is incredibly important, and when I'm teaching writing, I talk a lot about routine. Um, there is uh, an American crime writer, mainly she does crime, called Nora Roberts, who's one of the most commercially successful writers um, in the world, I think, and she publishes about six books a year. And she has one rule of writing, and that rule is ass in the chair. And if you're not sitting down and doing it, nothing will get done. And there will be days, most days maybe, when you really don't feel like it. And unless you have a routine where it's the job that you do, so you sit down and do it, um, that gives you the resource to, to keep going when you don't necessarily want to. I think it's such a peculiar thing to say. Um, it presumes that writing, I don't know, is it a kind of magical gift from the gods and the spirit takes you or the spirit does not? Um, my son takes music lessons. Now, he's my son. I think he's a pretty good guitarist. I don't think he's going to be a professional musician. But he wants to know more about the techniques of music, the forms of music, the different kinds of music that there are in the world. That's what lessons can give him. Um, I don't really understand why writing should be different in that way from any other craft. And indeed, my students, um, over the years that, that I've been teaching, um, Really, nobody has come to me under the illusion that a course with me or any other writing teacher is a kind of magical route to fame and publication. They 
like me feel a pressure to be a writer, maybe they don't even know what that means. And they want more equipment to exercise that skill. So I think, I think it's nonsense, and I actually think it's quite poisonous, elitist nonsense, um, to say that writing can't be taught. Sorry, keep out, just for us. That's what that means. I don't know. I, for many years, I was the literary editor of the Times. So I guess I was in a position to, well, I was in that public discourse and I was helping to make that public discourse. Um, no, I mean, it always seemed to me, I think there's a lot of talk about how literature is marginalized and certainly there are issues to be addressed, the future of publishing, how to make money out of writing, who makes money out of writing. There are other things to do. There are great television programs to watch. There are computer games to play. Um, but I think you only have to look at, uh, say, the discussion that occurs around prizes. Indeed, the founding of this prize, the Folio Prize, the awarding of this prize. People seem to be pretty interested. So I'm not, I'm not too worried. This, I'm a judge of the Mann Booker Prize this year. So, um, so I'm reading a lot um, is, is the answer. Um, but I'm also reading, um, I'm reading stories, books that aren't eligible for the prize. So I'm reading um, Lydia Davis's um, amazing new collection of stories, which is called Can't and Won't. I've just read Laurie Moore's collection, Bark. Um, so I have plenty to keep me going. <laughs>